Sermon of His Holiness Pope Jacobus I on Third Dominica in Pasca, 21 April, 2024 Anno Domini. Commemoration of the Feast of Saint Anselm, Bishop, Confessor, Doctor of the Church, within the octave of the Solemnity of Saint Joseph. Today is the third Dominica in Pascha, post Pascha, in Pascal Diet. The epistle is taken from the epist first epistle of St. Peter the Apostle, 1 Paul, chapter 2. My dearest, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims to refrain yourself from carnal desires which war against the soul, having your conversation good among the Gentiles that in that wherein they mis misreport of you as of malefactors, by the good works considering you, they may glorify God in the day of visitation. Be subject therefore to every human creature for God, whether it, it be to king as excelling, or to rulers as sent by him to the revenge of malefactors, but to the praise of the good, for so is the will of God, that doing well you may make the ignorance of unwise men to be done, as free and not as having the, free, the freedom for a cloak of malice, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the fraternity, fear God, honor the king. Servants be subject in all fear to your masters, not only to the good and modest, but also to the wayward. For this is thanked in Christ Jesus, O Lord. Please stand for today's gospel. It's taken from Gospel St. John chapter 16. At that time saith Jesus to his disciples, A little while, and now, and now you shall not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Some therefore of his disciples said one to another, What is this that he saith to us? A little while, and you shall not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me, and because I go to the Father. They said, therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while, we know not what he speaketh. And Jesus knew, knew that they would ask him, and he said to them, Of this you do question among yourselves, because I said to you, A little while, and you shall not see me, again a little while, and you shall see me. Amen, amen, I say to you, that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and you shall be made sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she travaileth, hath sorrow, because her hour is come, but when she had brought forth the child, now she remembered not the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And you therefore now, indeed, you have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man shall take from you. As far as the words of today's gospel be seated. little while and now you shall not see me again a little while and you shall see me because i go to the father you know me the father is it really it's spirit sancti amen in today's gospel christ our lord speaks seemingly something that seems like mysterious message to the to the apostles but 
it's not mysterious at all because obviously what follows from this is the history of uh, what took place before he ascended into heaven. That's why the Holy Mother Church uh, teaches this in today's gospel because it's fitting during the Paschal Tide to prepare the hearts and souls of those who are truly Catholic for that great feast of the ascension of Christ our Lord. That means at that, that's the celebration of the moment when the gates of heaven were opened by entrance of God himself, return of God himself, uh, God's Son to God the Father. And of course those who are uh, in the in the limbo, those souls of the just, all those prophets and patriarchs and so forth of the Old Testament, they were uh, accompanied, they accompanied Christ our Lord on the way to heaven so they could finally obtain that reward for which they waited so long in limbo. So the eternal reward to be with God for all eternity. And so Christ our Lord, when he says something like this, it's self-evident that he means first and uh, that a little while and now you shall not see me, which is the ascension. And again, a little while and you shall see me because I go to the Father, which is the second part of this message. And it's much more mysterious because obviously it will be the judgment that our Christ our Lord illustrates that the, all those who were created by God, all the human souls, they will be reunited to their bodies at the general judgment at the end of the world, and then they will see God face to face at receiving their reward as the souls that were able to save themselves for, for eternity as, as true good Catholics in the state of sanctifying grace, or those who have neglected and perverted themselves to the point that they committed mortal sin, and many of them, but it suffices that one mortal sin is on the soul, and therefore they were punished by the sentence of hell. So obviously, of course, it also may illustrate by allusion the particular judgment when the soul is separated from the body at the, at the natural death of, this, of the body, and the soul goes for it, her a particular judgment in front of God, obviously. But also, by allusion, it may be evident that it means and signifies the eternal salvation of the soul, so that then there's no interruption of seeing God anymore. And that's the ultimate goal of the soul, and purpose of life as it is. Because nothing is greater in life, in human life, than to be able to save one soul for all eternity. Nothing is more important than salvation of your soul. Of course today that does not resonate with people, because today the allurements of, of worldly life, the, the desires, carnal desires of the soul, that war against the of, of, the, of the body as it is, but carnal desire, desires of people, uh, they are destroying that mindset and proper path to salvation because then they are replacing the, by these desires, they are replacing the desire to save one's soul and desire to see God face to face and to be, be, be with him for all eternity. And of course, when that happens, that's an insult to God because it negates the very promise that he promised. Eye has not seen, nor ear has heard, as St. Paul puts it, what God has prepared for them uh, that love him. It's unimaginable happiness, exceeding all human uh, understanding and knowledge and and comprehension as it is, what awaits those who are just souls, which is possible only to be, to become, or to be one, 
of the true Catholic, which is practice of the Catholic faith, firm profession and functional prof profession of the Catholic faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition. So those who call themselves Catholic and practice something else, including this apostate Novozoda sect, and those who recognize this horrible sect as Catholic, they will not be able to save their soul. Not one of them. Precisely because they are destroying the, the faith in themselves. And they are negating the faith by professing heretical falsehoods supplied to them by the devil and his henchmen, the enemies of the church. And so such, such like people who claim to be Catholic but are not Catholic, they are safely on the way to hell. Every single one of them. But that it also illustrates in today's gospel that the, the, the apostles were not yet endowed with that understanding with the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost, which they obtained at the day of Pentecost, which also leads in today's gospel to that point, and that's why the, today's gospel is this way and it reflects on that, because the preparation for their souls, God has prepared them even before his before his passion as it is recorded in today's gospel for that so they knew what will come about and they understood afterwards that that's why Christ our Lord prepared them for it so, and he told them you shall see me and your joy no man shall take from you because it is immense happiness, state of happiness of the soul, elevation to heights, supernatural, divine, truly divine, that the soul is, when the soul is safe for eternity, is elevated to the heights of un, un, seen, unheard of, that no human intellect can describe them. Why? Because precisely they are divine, they are supernatural, and therefore God is not revealing that in normal sense to those who don't understand and don't wish to understand what it is that, that the eternal salvation is truly and what it what it means. And therefore, when the devil incites them, such souls, such perverted souls, into those carnal desires, he knows precisely that that severs the soul from the understanding, that God will no longer supply such a perverted soul with the understanding of what it means to be truly Catholic, and why it is so, and what it entails, and what it brings about which again means it is nothing less than the eternal salvation. And so the devil supplies that soul with perversions, with desires of money, worldly honors, recognition, fabricated falsehoods, false information, desires of all kinds of uh, things that are not helpful to save one's soul. And the soul is perverted, and the devil possess, possesses that soul. And when that soul is dux perverted, there's no possibility of recovery unless God provides that recovery himself. And that's how bad it is today. Because precisely God has permitted this evil to come about because people do not love the truth. They do not love him. They do not wish to serve him, adore him, to be a Catholic, to be part of his church. And that's why the Holy Mother Church today, represented solely and only by this Holy Apostolic See of Rome in exile, is in the catacombs. Is in, we are in the exile because precisely of that scandalous, abominable lack of faith of those who dare to say they are Catholic and they do not belong to Christ our Lord and not, and they are not members of the church, by way of heresy, apostasy, perversion, and being members of the non-Catholic sect that 
uses the term, uses the holy name of Catholic to deceive and sentence people to hell. And that's how bad the situation is. And when they don't take care how they behave themselves and rather listen to suggestions of the devil, and the devil knows how to pull their string and uh, how to pervert them because he has done so many times before. They don't have any chance of recovery without the help of God. The supernatural help, which is stronger than anything, is essential and necessary for them to recover. And when God sees that they will not listen to his church, they will not recognize his church, they recognize the heretics, and they are not willing to amend and convert and become truly Catholic. God leaves them to their blindness. They are deaf to the truth. They do not wish to learn anything new. That means that which will help them to save their soul. That means Catholic tradition. Because they were brought up in that non-Catholic apostate sect called Novo Zoro. Or they were brought up by the heretics who recognized this horrible sect. Or by the set of accountants heretics who claim this horrible heresy and deny our very existence and that we possess the, the keys to the kingdom of heaven by the election of God as God there was no other way to protect the promise of Christ our Lord God himself to St. Peter that the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church that's how simple the truth is it is truly simple but how many will hear, hear it and how many will just simply say that they don't believe. Very few will hear it, and that only by the help of God, nothing else, nothing less. And so, in today's world, as it progresses to its own self-destruction and decay and immorality, wickedness, criminality, truly crimes so rampant in front of God and sinfulness and the manners that have never been for, never been, been even foreseen in times past as people are today. That is the consequence of sin and perversion that exists. And therefore, those who strive after become tr to become truly Catholic, even then have difficulty to even acquire the, the, the sanctity of their soul, to, to try to acquire the virtues that are so necessary for their practice of the Catholic faith. And they reject the truth and they become fruitless and perverted and the devil possesses their soul. They become his slaves. And they cannot escape the hands of the devil because he is much stronger than we are. And unless God helps them to recover, they are safely in his hands, in the devil's hands. And it becomes truly obvious. And the church teaches that many times have this, the, truly explained this in her writings and so forth by the popes, our predecessors of blessed memory. And it does not resonate with people. Why? Because they think that they are free to just do as they please. And they do not help themselves in any way because they reject the truth and essentially just deny the existence of God in many cases. Or if they do acknowledge the existence of God, they do not honor God the way they must honor Him. And they do not wish to be Catholic. And because of the perversion and the scandalous, horrifying abominations that this horrible sect has caused, they are driven away from acquiring the or learning the Catholic faith. And which is nothing else but Catholic tradition. Because, and that's precisely the design of the devil, to provide them with uh, falsehoods and scandals with this horrible sect 
pro-communist sect is causing, and purposely so, to drive people away from learning the truth and acquiring the, the and obtaining from God the gift of faith, the gift of the Catholic faith, that is. That is. And then they become fruitless. They become absolutely, it becomes absolutely impossible for them to become Catholic because they do not have the willingness nor mindset to learn the truth and to obtain the grace of conversion from God. And he, foreseeing how they are, how they neglect, or how they outright deny to that the truth of salvation, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, God leaves them to their own misery, and then they are perverted, and the devil is their master. That's the common lot of today's world, of most of the majority of people living in this world are like this. That's the general apostasy in today's world, which is, which has been witnessed. The scriptural references all over, and therefore, when people are like this, God will leave them to their own misery. And what applies in today's gospel to them, they will not hear. Of course, when the, 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 the apostles to ask our Lord, they had the mind to ask him, and then he had to uh, get it out of them, what he said, what it means. They finally were able to understand it correctly on the day of Pentecost when they were endowed with the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost, which was the sacrament of confirmation they received, of St. Thomas Aquinas teaches, and the church always held as such. And then they were able to teach the truth of salvation, the Holy Gospels and doctrine in matters of faith and morals. And spread wide with great difficulties and hardships endurance, and ultimately the martyrdom they received from Christ our Lord, and they were able to save their soul, and transmitted the truth, the divine deposit of faith, which is nothing else but Catholic tradition, to the successors, so that they could continue the good work of salvation, the mission of the church, and avoid and condemn those things that are heretical, and supplied by the enemy, arch enemy, the devil, through his henchmen, as it is happening today, in much larger on much larger scale than ever seen before, and only those who are truly willing to set aside everything in their lives and to be truly Catholic, only those who will be helped by God, and the rest who don't see the truth will remain blind and deaf, and the devil will hold them to it until they face after that, their natural death of the body, face God in their particular judgment, and then they will receive from him the words of damnation. Depart, depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire which was prepared by, for the devil and his angels, and so forth. And when the Holy Mother Church needs help, and we explain that in our publications, they neglect or they are incapable of producing good fruits because they don't believe, because they don't hear the words that the church speaks, and they don't hear the truth of salvation, precisely for this exact reason, that they do not belong to God, they do not wish to serve Him, even though they claim so in a way, but in the, their deeds they deny Him. Why? Because they believe fabricated heretic falsehood applied to them by the devil and they make it into their way of life and they neglect to truly set aside these heretical fabrications and, and poisons and only embrace the truth of salvation. And on, account, on that account, as we have said, God leaves them to their own misery.
So in closing today, even though it's painful and our Lord speaks about anguish and sorrow that will and truly be the common lot of those, will be the life of those who are truly His, but that it will suddenly be changed into joy, which means for many it will be the knowledge of the truth as it is. Even during their lifetime when they become true Catholic, they were baptized and into the church and or were accepted from heresy by after the, the abjuration of heresy and and some promise to obey the church. And after they have learned the faith, catechism, which the catechism of the Council of Trent is the best as it is. And after they were examined, accepted into the bosom of the church and received the sacraments and the true who were present at our Mass. Because to be present at the Mass, at the so called Masses of the heretics, is fruitless and only, call, only causes the person who does so to commit more sin of sacrilege. Who does so willfully and knowingly. But today, that is how it is, unfortunately. And because the faith comes first, and people neglect to learn what it is. They fall into these horrifying states of their soul, the mire of sin, immorality, all kinds of things that are totally destructive of their eternal salvation, of chance of salvation, or chance of salvation. And God leaves them and they don't even have the desire to convert. They lose that desire by the very fact that they embrace something that is not truly Catholic. And that desire is not with them because that has to come from God. It's the divine grace working in their soul. And when that soul is not helped by God to elevate that desire into the height so that the soul produces upon that, builds upon that with the deeds of of and acts of virtues, virtuous life, charity, hospitality, alms deeds, and so forth. All those things that are pleasing and abstaining from sin. The soul is not capable of its own endeavor to obtain it, to, to endeavor to, to truly acquire it. God is the one who is helping. And when God sees that the soul is neglectful or, God forbid, indifferent, or an empathy towards the truth, then the blindness remains and the soul is in the hands of the devil because of sin, because of heresy, because of being separated from the unity of the church and outright denial to learn the truth of salvation and outright denial of part of that perverted soul what that soul owes to God, the gratitude, love, charity, and service and adoration as it is. And therefore, God is not pleased with today's world because precisely this horrifying state of how the world is progressing into that, into this horrible state and decay is so prevalent, so immense in magnitude, as we have said, never seen before. And it's only a matter of time when the punishment is coming. The divine wrath will be unleashed and those who have neglected to learn the truth and rather embraced the, the, the lies of the devil and because they have not received the love of the truth, God will allow them to fall into these errors and horrifying things and remain there until they, by the grace of God, let us hope, finally realize that they were deceived by these enemies of the church and will embrace the truth and strive to become true Catholic and become part of the member and members of the Catholic Church which is today represented solely by this holy apostolic see of Rome in exile.
That's how simple the, the message is. And today that's self-evident. Because after the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came upon the apostles in a miracle, miraculous way and enriched them with all understanding and knowledge and wisdom and fortitude and counsel and piety and the fear of God and so forth. They were able to bring forth the good fruits and abundance of good fruits to God and serve Him and to be able to convert many by the help of God and to continue the Holy Mother Church, the true Roman Catholic Church, outside of which there's no salvation. Amen. Benedictio Dei Omnipotenti, Pater, et Filius, et Spiritus Sanctus, descend ad super vos, et manat semper. Amen.